Hello again. I'm going to start pushing these out a little bit faster rather than once every two or three days. So, in the last one we set up our hotbar to be able to highlight one and all that jazz and actually appear on screen, but now we need to set it up to where when we pick up something it'll actually show up in our little widget, our little hotbar. Basically update and let us know what we're actually holding on to. So for this I am using oh, I am using this craft resources icon. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. It's a free texture pack. You can use any texture you want. This one's decent enough for what we're doing because it's got different crafting stuff, some tools. Uh, we'll have to kind of makeshift some stuff, but it, it's a good starting point at least. So I'll leave that down below. And let's jump into our. Yeah, this is the right one. Let's jump into ours. So the way we're going to be able to do this is we need to tell the item what information it needs to hold so we know what we're going to pick up. We're going to start with the tools. So I'm going to jump into the base item because something that every single item we pick up is going to need, it's going to need a static mesh. Since we might have some weapons that have a skeletal mesh instead, we'll also put one of those in there. We want to make sure that the collision presets on the static mesh are block all so that we can switch it to custom and set its object type to interact so that we'll be able to pick it up. Now I'm going to make it to where it does not block the camera just out of paranoia's sake. I'm pretty sure we disabled the collision response but just in case. Now under the variables we need to add the item info. This will be the actual information of the item that we are trying to pick up. And under the class settings, we need to add the interface of the interact. BPI interact. Now we'll get rid of all this. Compile. And then right click on event interact. We want to get the player character. And we're going to do our checks. So we're going to see check has... Oh, check inventory space. We'll do that right there. We'll grab our item info out and we're going to break it open. The item info goes into the item info and the current stack goes into the amount. We can hide the unconnected pins because that's going to be just what we need right there. Then we'll add a branch. And if we do have space, then we want to go ahead and send our pickup message along. So we'll, is it, it's add item. Add item, right there. And then we will just grab out one more item info. And then we'll just drag this over here and double click to add a reroute. Then after we add the item, we will just destroy the actor in reference. So now whatever item we make, will be able to be picked up. So let's go into our base tool. We'll right click and create a child blueprint class. This will be the BP underscore axe. Right click and duplicate that one and say BP underscore hammer. And we'll just set up three for now. You can either duplicate this or child of the base tool. You wanna to make sure you're not doing a child of this one though. I'm just gonna duplicate the hammer and BP underscore hoe. Should probably call that tiller or something, but yeah, I'm just gonna stick with it. I don't care. Save everything real quick. And then we'll open each one up. You're on the wrong screen. Get over here. Alright. And then we'll set each one's parameters. So that farmer dude comes with a few different tools. Namely, the hammer the axe and uh, <laughs> sorry I just watched King of the Hill recently and it's reminded me of an episode <laughs> one of his house <laughs> sorry okay back on topic so now we have these three out here and we can go into our axe Let's find the axe in our content browser, and while it is selected, we can go into our axe blueprint, highlight the static mesh, click this little arrow, and there she goes. 
Same thing with the hammer, so let's go grab the hammer in the inventory. Open full blueprint editor, viewport static mesh, arrow. Compile. Did I compile? I compiled. Now for the hoe. Static mesh, kablamo, compile, yeah, yeah. All right. So now each one has their static mesh set up. We can set their item info at the top with the BPX self selected. We can get access to its class defaults. Now this is where we can set its ID. So axe, it is a tool. It is called, an, not an ace, an axe. For this one, I don't actually have an axe texture. I forgot to add that one to this one. So, uh, and I've already closed that. I don't want to waste y'all's time. I'll come back and add that later. Here is where you will go to your uh, texture folder for now. I'm just going to use this one. Current stack of one, max stack of one. Uh, let's see, effectiveness two to four. This will affect how many pieces of wood we get later when we're attacking or chopping trees. Not attacking trees. <laughs> when we're trying to chop trees uh, so we'll be able to use that to vary how much you get instead of getting the same amount each time stamina cost three item class this is an axe and we can adjust the rest of it later this is good for now hammer same thing it's hammer time hammer tool hammer uh, red face there you are. Max stack one, effectiveness two to four, stamina cost three, and this is the hammer. Compile that. Did I compile? I compiled. Same thing for this one. The item ID is that. It is a tool. It is the hoe. Did I name the hammer? I did. And for the image, uh, we'll just do that for now, I guess. Current stack one, one, two, four, three, and how? Yeah, yeah. Whoa! What in the world? I don't know what happened there. All right, we're back where we were. My mouse has been acting kind of funky lately. So now we have our little items that we can go ahead and drop into the world. Under tools, there's that, and that, and that. That hammer is small. Let's get rid of the static mesh references so we don't get confused because if you try to pick these up, it won't work. I'm gonna get rid of that also. And these three, let me in. Save everything. So now we can jump in and we should be able to pick these up. Added new, added new, added new. Awesome. So they are being picked up, but it's not registering on our widgets because we haven't set up that functionality yet. So let's go to our user interface, blueprints, UI elements, inventory icon. So this is what we're going to be doing. Instead of rebuilding everything every single time, what we're going to do is we're just basically going to feed more item info back in and then do this. So we'll get rid of that deactivate highlight because every time we do this we want to be able to. We'll do a custom event. Refresh item info. And it will have an input of our item info. That will be our item info struct. Oh, oh, the S is okay. Item info struct. And then we will just set it to the new, back it up, and then we can just set the style. So that's all well and good, but how do we feed that event over to from our player? So we go into our player. Let's go to the class settings because we are going to be needing an interface element because the inventory component is where we're adding items so we can't directly access it here but what we can do is we'll go to our interface and we'll add a new one 
add a new function, item added to slot. And this will be the item info that's added. Uh, item info. And then we'll get the slot index. So this is the so index integer. Compile that, save that. And then over in the player blueprint, we can compile one more time just to make sure it's updated. And we'll go right here and event item added to slot. We will get our HUD. We will get our hotbar icons, because for right now that's all we have. And we're going to see if what we're trying to get is a valid index. Because we're also going to have an inventory window later on, so we'll be open, able to open it up and check our backpack. First we want to check to see if we're updating something in the hotbar. If it's not of the hotbar, then it's of our backpack, so we'll be able to filter through and be like, oh, it's not this, it's this. But for now, all we're going to check is the hotbar. So we'll feed this in and say, is this a valid index? If yes, then we want to get a copy of that index. And this is where it's going to get a little spaghettified for just a little bit, but we'll, we'll clean it up. And we'll get our refresh item info that we set up and plug that in here. So let's go ahead and we'll drag this down maybe, let's see, and pull that over here, just try to clean it up a little bit, make it a little less noodly, that'll work for now. So we are saying, all right, you added an item to slot. What is the slot number and what is the item info? Okay, let me get that hotbar icon and refresh that item info. For now, this is also not going to do anything because we need to call this. We can call this from our inventory component. So let's open that up. Open, edit the inventory component. Is it already open? Oh, it's, ugh, it's right here in front of me. My goodness, okay. So we're going to get rid of those print strings and we'll hook this all the way up to the end. And we can do this pretty easily. So this is a child component. So it will have a parent component or an owner. And the way we can f feed across our interface functions is we can get owner. Target is actor component. This is the actor that owns this component. And we can filter across add item. Oh, item added to slot. I am bad about remembering things that I name. <laughs> and we can feed over, this is the index of the newly added item. And we can filter over our item info, just like that. So over here where we are updating an inventory element, we have the found index right here and the item info. So we can do the same thing, get owner. And this is added item to slot, item added to slot. I think I'm dyslexic. We'll feed over the index and the item info. Compile that. Now when we jump out, we should be able to run over. Huzzah! I got confused for a second. I was expecting different icons. But there we go. Now it's getting added to our slot. Now they don't do anything yet, but at least it's updating. So in the next one, I'll have actually added those craft resource icons like I was expecting I had, and we'll set it up to where the tools will start spawning in our character's hand. So I will see y'all in a little bit. It's probably coming out tonight also because I've got nothing else to do. So <laughs> see y'all there. Bye.